We're live, pal. Hey, we're live, pal. This is Jose Young's with MMAfighting.com here for another Wednesday episode of the A-Side live chat. It's been a long couple of weeks, but we are back. Can everyone hear me, by the way? I always get complaints that people can't hear me. But, of course, joining me this week is my normal partner in crime, Alex Savas, and producer extraordinaire, who is probably drinking incorrect coffee, E. Casey Lydon. So I'm going to start with Alex first, because Casey doesn't matter because he's drinking bad coffee. Alex, how's life? Oh, life's good. I don't like complaining these days, you know? So much negativity out there, so. Anyway, Casey, how's your terrible coffee? Didn't you listen to Alex? Too much negativity. Like, how's my yeah, how's, but... how's my wonderful coffee with my wonderful, Why, what are you drinking? Um, some nice pour over coffee I just had, and it's got I have some um some um, oat milk creamer in there and so to get, oh, lighten it up put, a bit. Oh, you put stuff in your coffee. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Alex, you put stuff in your coffee. I do not. There you go. See, Casey's looks surprised. So. During the post fight show, like, what was it? I don't even remember, Saturday? Someone in the comment section asked us what we put in our coffee, and I said, nothing. And Casey's like, I put in this and that, and fairy dust, and magic, and whatever he else puts in, and it was wrong. And he looked shocked and chagrined that people would dare not put anything in his co- in their coffee. Yeah, but who's drinking coffee right now? Look at you losers, just... Yeah. What is this? This is an ice. This is an ice. He's got, black he's got, he's got ice in his coffee. What are you, Mr. Look at you, Mr. I, I live Dunkin in Donuts. Arizona. This is decent coffee my, from my friend's coffee shop. If you're a punk and you like zines, go to decent coffee. This is a black Americano case. This is as hard as it gets at 112 degrees. I'm not drinking black Americano, hot Americanos at 112 degrees. In a plastic and cup? You, in a plastic yeah. cup. See? I agree, but it's it's a paper okay, okay, straw. Okay, okay. okay first, of all, cup. That. first of all, your mic is way too hot. Your your audio is way crazy right now, Mister Ice Coffee. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's fix that then. That's on your end. I can't fix this, man. I thought he was just yelling at us, like. No, super I'm not it. yelling. <laughs> no, no. I I I just, I just got confirmation from um, Esther Lynn that you are yelling. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> but everyone knows everyone knows I can't start my day without yelling about coffee specifically <laughs> about my ice americano from decent coffee in Phoenix Arizona anyway do, 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 this is not our do you recycle those cups this, of course okay I'm just you know 100% <laughs> you should get some you should think about investing in some reusable straws too. I'm just saying I mean, I should. I hey, should. Look at you. But, uh, look at you. The only thing I don't like is that this cup came with a nice black one, and then my cat bit it, so now I've stuck with these ugly red ones. It was such a dope cup before, but i got to find some black straws. Right. 10 out of 10. No, I like the black and red. Anyway, it's just <laughs> not our podcast. We could talk about coffee for, I don't know, two hours. <laughs> And after, those, and after those two hours, Casey would still be wrong, and I would still be right. So anyway, Casey, what is our first question from our lovely listeners? I don't know. It looks up amateurish. i got to untangle this. <laughs> Jeez. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. Stream call. Okay, cool. Uh, first question from our lovely listeners and viewers. Where the hell is that button? There we go. Two. Where's my questions? Here we go. You know what? I'm going to actually go to... Let's just go right off the breaking news real quick. Breaking news. Breaking news from Ollie in the YouTube comment section. Thoughts on Brunson versus Shabazzian fight being promoted to the main event and your predictions for that fight. So, yes, for those of you tuning in who haven't heard, uh, I believe it was Dana White announced uh, Irene Aldane. Was it? It was her, right? She had tested positive for COVID-19. Are you sure about that? Oh, is that what happened? I, I, I thought so. Unless no, I'm just, I, and I know that fight has been postponed to a later date, and Dana White did announce it. Uh, yeah. But Edmund Shabazzian versus Derek Brunson has been elevated to the main event of the August first card. Uh, they had been booked to fight in Portland, and then it got. I think actually, the, weren't they supposed to fight on the Brooklyn card, and then it got bumped to the Portland card, and then it got bumped to this card, and now it is the main event. So, uh, I feel like we've been waiting for this fight for a very long time. Uh, but I'll start with Casey. Thoughts on this crazy scenario that went down maybe 30 minutes before we went live? Yeah, so um, <laughs> have we got confirmation that 
that one of the uh, Aldana or home got COVID. Is that true? Uh, I am looking right now. Yeah, I don't want. I am uh, looking yeah. right. But either way, um, Dana White did announce it on his um, IG chat or whatever. Um, it seems so odd to announce your main event is out just casually. Oh yeah, but whatever. Not, not, yeah. not my multi-billion dollar company, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when but, you have your multi-billion dollar yeah. company, you can do it your way. <laughs> I'll throw little pigeons out the windows. <laughs> Fights off. <laughs> Tell the world, pigeon. It says, according to MMAfighting.com, UFC President Dana White made the announcement on his official Instagram account on when, on Wednesday while speaking with ex champ Ronda Rousey. Holly Holmes' manager confirmed in a statement that Aldana withdrew from the fight and the matchup is postponed, possibly until October, but there's no word on what the actual reason for the postponement was. Okay, yeah, so, um, yeah, don't, uh, we don't want to suggest anyone has anything, but, um, but we do know uh, that it is Adana that, uh, Adana that pulled out, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, um, I'm actually happy that, I hope that fight doesn't happen, because I thought that fight was stupid in the first place to ever book, and, um, but, uh, to answer, um, uh, we, we've seen a few comments about does Aldana have COVID? We do not know that, so we are not suggesting that either. Um, but Aldana is the one that pulled herself out of the fight due to injury, or it could be a multitude of reasons. But back to your question, um, what do we think about the new main event? Um, is it five rounds? Do we know that yet? I doubt it's going to be five rounds. I, I doubt it. I well, doubt it. it's still far enough. It's not like it's six days notice. It's still a couple of weeks away. So, you know, maybe. I don't. But yeah. as of right, this only happens maybe 30 minutes yeah, before we went uh, live. So we're probably going to find out more information while this is going yeah, on. Yeah, I would assume it's still three rounds unless um, Dana gives them a little pay pay bump to um, get those extra rounds of sparring in to prepare themselves for extra 10 minutes of fighting, which is a big deal uh, if you're a fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, no, this is cool. Actually, I've, I've all, I always loved this matchup. I've been wanting to see this matchup for a long time. Actually, um, uh, I went to uh, Glendale Fighting Club uh, maybe in very late February, early March, right before the pandemic really shut everything down. And um, Shabazian was one of the um, last videos um, I, I really shot uh, in a gym. So uh, and that was why he was. That was when he was training for Brunson. And then about three days later, the whole world crashed and everything went to everything. Everything started sucking. And then 2020 really, <laughs> but um, no, yes, it's, it's but as of right, at, but again, it might for those of you just t- turning it, tuning in. I was still trying to see if there was an exact reason. We don't know why Aldana pulled out. Yeah, so it could know. be COVID. It could not be. It could be an injury. Who knows? But just, Alex, what are your thoughts yeah. on? the falling out of a very high level women's main event. Yeah, I don't know. I somebody was talking on Twitter and they were thinking that maybe they're just going to hold Holly for another title f- fight. I don't know. Nobody knows what the reason is, but uh to answer the second part of this question, mm. your prediction for the fight, I'm going Shabazian. Um I mean, he's got like what th- three first round finishes in his last fights? Is that is that what I'm looking at? Yeah. I mean, that's I kind of a... It's a... And he crushed Brad Tavares the, when we were in New York City. And the big story coming off that fight was uh, Izzy went five rounds at Brad Tavares, and Edwin Shabazzian just decimated him about two minutes. Obviously, that's not how MMA math works, <laughs> but when you're know. watching a fight, that's all anyone is, that's all anyone is going to talk about. Uh, is if if the champ couldn't beat him in five rounds and this young upstart beat him in about two minutes in a very violent fashion, uh, that's a fight everyone's going to start matchmaking immediately. And that's pretty much some of the worst. But it, she, that's some of the worst MMA math. But yes, it, that, but the right, facts are true. Right. <laughs> but it seems Edmund's taking the same path Izzy took. Like he's he gets these these couple fights in and then he gets the bump up to Brad Tavares, beats him, and, and then, then as soon as Izzy. Yeah. Brad Tavares, he fights Derek Brunson. And now Edmund Shabazzian is fighting Derek Brunson. So if he beats Derek Brunson, who's he going to fight after that? Imagine if all of a sudden Anderson Silva came back and fought Anderson Silva. And then he fights Kelvin Gastelum all of a sudden. Fight. <laughs> Not saying that's going to happen. Not saying that's going to happen. But the middleweight division uh, has a bright new prospect, but he has to get through Derek yeah. Brunson first. And I don't know who's going to win, but I lean Shabazzian. Yeah, I'm Lean Shabazian, but this is a great fight, and I'm I, like I, I've always said, I love I love vets versus prospects. And Brunson, 
And Brunson's not an out of his prime vet either. Brunson, by 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 what he thinks, and I still believe, is a borderline top five middleweight. And um, when Brun- I agree, yeah, and Brunson, yeah, Brunson's not a. Pa- it wasn't like when Rish- when um, Anthony Anthony Smith fought um, Rashad Evans, you know, it's like he was fighting someone way past his prime. This is Brunson still very good, but unfortunately, even a very good Brunson, I don't. I, I don't believe he breaks that top five, but um, let's see. That's, that's why I love this fight. And actually, I, I like this fight more well, than Aldana Home only because I hated Aldana Home has a matchup because it take it takes away a title contender from it takes away a title contender, and I think that's silly. Well, speaking on Derek Brunson, he seems to be in a much better place since the Izzy fight because he came in all hot. And then we've interviewed him at, at 241 when he was fighting Ian Heinish. And then remember we interviewed him at the Dominance Media Day. Mm-hmm. And he was just like in just a better place all around because if you look at his record, he came into the UFC back-to-back wins. Uh, so he was 2-0 in the UFC. And then he's about three minutes away from beating Yolo Romero. By decision yeah. before Yolo Romero just breaks his ribs and runs through him. Well, don't forget, don't, that, don't forget about the groin out. shots. Remember when groin shots were in that fight, too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then he picks up a decision over Lorenz Larkin. And then he KOs Ed Herman, Sam Alvey, Hohen Carnero, and Uriah Hall. So he has five, he has what, four KOs in a row. Headlines against Robert Whitaker. He said that if he beat Robert Whitaker, he would have got a title shot and he would have set the re- tied the record for most consecutive knockouts in a row. If you go back and watch that fight, he just acted a fool and then ran out with his chin wide up in the air and then gets destroyed. Well, uh, and, so he and, doesn't and, do that. And did, he beats wait, Robert he, he, did he hold drop on, Whitaker? On, did he on, drop hold Whitaker? On. <laughs> hold on a second. Oh, Casey. boy. And then he goes on, and I think he beats Anderson Silva. I thought he beat Anderson Silva. So Definitely if he beat him. he doesn't act a fool, if he does thank you. If he doesn't act a fool and then he gets one of those judges to give him a win, He's on like an eight-fight win streak, and he's probably fighting for a title. And then he picks up KOs over Dan Kelly and a violent one over Machida, and then acts a fool against uh, Dr. Ray, and then comes in all hot against Izzy. So he's not losing to bums, and he's just destroying everyone else. So I think Derek Brunson could easily be a top-five middleweight. <laughs> all right. That is the story of Derek <laughs> Brunson. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ollie, yeah, so that's <laughs> but I, I was backing up my claims with facts. Wait, yeah, were you too. reading off a sheet or was that all the news? Um, I, I, I didn't remember his consecutive who he KO'd in a row back in the day. But I knew who he – because I've made this argument for Derek Brunson forever okay. about how he's really good and just only gets crushed by world-class fighters. And, and that's the problem with Derek Brunson. It's not the fact that he loses. It's the fact that his losses are very high-profile losses. And usually yeah. it's him just like laid out. It's not like he gets grinded out or he loses a close decision. Like, oh, you know, he just don't remember his losses. You, you just, he's, he kind of has that Corey Anderson thing when Corey Anderson is clearly a very a top level light heavyweight, but when he loses, That's a good comparison. he loses big and it yeah. sticks in your mind. And so fans think that, I, I see this in the comments. Fans think Brunson isn't as good as you know we try to claim he is, but he clearly is. It's just his losses are he loses big, wins That's big, loses big, comparison. yeah. Um, because it's all it all. He's also one of those fighters where whenever he's at press conferences, we he's for whatever reason because he's lost to so many high level middleweights, they all fight each other. So his the first question he always gets is, "Hey Derek, you've lost to both of these men. Who do you think's <laughs> gonna win when they fight?" Like that seems to be the the trend with him. But watch my six 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 on the YouTube comments, <laughs> and his profile picture is a very yoked Jesus Christ. Holm has already been a title contender on a couple of occasions without earning it, ahead of Kellen Vieta. Aldana versus Holm is stylistically great, too. What would you prefer? Per, over, what, is, what is he asking? I'm not sure, between, actually. Between Holm getting another title shot and seeing Aldana versus Holm, I think. Aldana doesn't have it. What? Who is? Wait, Holm has already been a title contender on a couple. Well, I, 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 think, I think Holm has earned all of his title shots. But um, that's up for debate, I guess. Um, yeah, she, I think she definitely did because people seem to forget that she beat Megan Anderson at featherweight before getting that shot against Cyborg. Yeah. It's not like she was just gifted it. She beat the number one contender. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure what this person is asking. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I thought that was a question, but it was just kind of. It was, it was a question, but no real setup. <laughs> sorry. All right. Um. Uh. 
Oh, here we go. This is for all of us, though. <laughs> this person is clearly at so Casey. If Aldana isn't fight Holm, who should Aldana fight then? Uh, Aldana should Aldana should be fighting Amanda Nunes when she's ready to come back. She beat Caitlin Vieira by magnificent knock. Cat, Cat sorry, Cat 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 Catlin Catlin Vieira. Catlin Catlin Vieira by massive knockout. So uh, she should be fighting for the title next, and uh, there's no reason that Adonis should be fighting home. It's just, um, yeah. And uh, ooh, someone says I stink. Can you smell me, guys? Is it true? They don't want to say anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, if, oat milk. It, oat milk. Yeah. yeah. If you're, you're my, you're secreting oat milk. Yeah. If you're my friend. You'll tell me if I stink. All right. Let's actually go to our questions that were submitted on our website. Do 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 do. Can you read? From from Jay Romero at our Average Joe R on Twitter, another longtime commenter. So, since boxing is considered part of the martial arts by definition and a big part of MMA, should boxers be considered martial artists? Why do you think they're often considered just boxers as it's something outside of the other disciplines? Um, interesting question. Yeah, I do consider boxing part of uh, martial arts. Um, I talked to Brian Stan once, uh, and I asked him if he, because he has like a bunch of daughters, like if they ever wanted to get into MMA, where would you start him? And he goes, and Brian Stan said, the absolute best martial art you can do is amateur wrestling. And that is the first time I had ever heard someone call or label collegiate wrestling as a martial art. And when I thought about it, he was right. So yes, boxing is a martial art. They are martial artists, but... Alex, your thoughts on calling boxers martial artists? I think they just don't do... I mean, I don't know the technical definition of what makes a martial art a martial art, but I think the reason that they go by boxers is just because I think there's more prestige attached to the word boxer than there is to a martial artist. Like, if... if I mean, going back, like, boxers make more money, boxers have way more notoriety, more more fame. Martial arts is still kind of seen as just like this, like, human cockfighting, so I think that's that could be what that's why I would go by boxing a boxer there I also think <clears throat> the fact that there's no um, belt system in boxing probably plays a major factor it's not like you can be a black belt in boxing mm. uh, also you get a lot of boxers that like in, in karate and uh, Muay Thai and even like the traditional ones like Kung Fu and ju Judo and everything they do wear like there is some sort of uniform like a gi or a belt or the armbands and it's very people consider, consider martial artists about respect and bow to your opponent it's not really that in boxing they just take their shirts off put gloves on and break break on each other uh but i think the fact there's no belt system plays a major factor yeah i would go with belt system if if boxing had like oh hey congratulations <laughs> you you you've graduated to blue gloves no, that'd be amazing you're a martial artist now there's no in muay thai they get the armbands right I'm not sure. I don't know the I don't sure. know the 100 percent definition, so someone correct me. But I remember when John Jones called uh, Tiago Tiago Santos uh, black belt in Muay Thai. All of the Twitter was like, "There's no belt system. What is he talking about?" I know. So, I correct know, me if I'm wrong. I know some Muay Thai schools um, have uh, adopted sort of a, a belt system, but it's kind of a it's a bit of a marketing ploy, you know. To, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. It's just there's no real yeah. You know, sure. The the, belt, the, belt, the the unofficial belt system is like okay you're you go against that guy now, he's better than that guy. That's pretty much yeah. it. <laughs> All right. So, but to answer your question, yeah, boxers should be martial artists. Everyone, everyone, everyone should be happy now. <laughs> you be whatever you want to be. Yeah. In this world. <laughs> ah. From Yusuf Nazar. Nazar, I apologize on Twitter. Hello from a longtime listener from Dubai. Hello. How do you pronounce uh, Hazmat's last name? I'm not even going to try and. Shmayev? Shmayev? Hazmat yeah. Shmayev versus Nico Price. Tickle your guys' fancy. P.S. Le Moreo ice cream. Trust me. I don't know what that means, but I assume he's talking about what is everyone's ice cream flavor or what is the flavor to use in an ice cream can. And Alex looks like she's looking it up. So she'll ice cream. <laughs> Wait, so she'll nothing... what no she... oh. For those of you that are just listening, she just made a very disgusted face. No, like I have no idea what it is. I'm not like the hashtag Lemoreo on Instagram is nine things. I think it's a typo. I don't know what this is. Mr. Dubai, let us know. Well, okay. So, well, moving on from his ice cream flavor. <laughs> Um, but, um, oh man, I got, 
do with all these these new Russian fighters and uh, where is this guy? Is he from Russia? Is he where is he from? Uh, I think isn't he from Sweden? Oh, Sweden. Never mind. Oh yeah, he is from Sweden. I'm not Sorry. 100%. Yeah, yeah, he's from Sweden. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, he's, 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 not, he's the one that. He's the one. He is Gustafson's main training partner. Oh, okay. I'm getting confused with someone else. Okay. I, I'm, oh, he's the one that's fighting. He's fighting. And he's fighting this Friday. I mean, this Saturday. Yeah. He's yeah. the one fighting in two yes. in back to not back to back weeks, but uh, two weeks apart. Right. When did he fight yes. last? Yes. Kate or Kater Ige. So Kater. Wait, Kater Ige. Yep. <laughs> but that was on was Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, the 15th. It was a week ago. So he's fighting less than two weeks apart. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> wow. Is that what, what's the record? Is that a record? I think it's Chaz Skelly, but I don't know. Well, if he, it depends on if he wins, I think. I think there's been fighters that have fought in fairly frequently back to back, but I don't think it's the. Uh, I don't record for consecutive thirteen thirteen days is the record by Chaz Skelly. So this will beat it, because he fought on a Wednesday. He, oh, wow. Well, Ten days. yeah, that's that's the question you should have asked, Mister Nazar. <laughs> like. But um, yeah, so uh, I, if he if um, Chimeya, jeez, some of these guys, Chimeyev, <laughs> these are new fighters. We haven't heard their yeah. names very often. <laughs> Chimeyev, if if he wins on if he wins on Saturday, he'd be on a two fight UFC lose two fight UFC winning streak. So and he'd be undefeated. So yeah, Nico Price sounds great. <laughs> Anyone versus Nico uh, Price sounds great. Did you do watch his post fight press conference, Casey? Uh, you have to remind me. I watched them all, but we've seen like two thousand of them. So, sure. <laughs> right? he's the one. But Alex, Alex, you watched it. He's the one that said he doesn't want to be an Instagram fighter. Oh yeah. He was a charismatic individual. Like uh, I thought, he he held himself well up there and spoke well. And I thought, I think he gained a lot of fans just from his press conference. But he has an Instagram though. Right, but he doesn't want to be a guy that just posts himself training all the time. He actually wants to go out there and fight. He wanted to, to be smash fair, our own Instagram fighters. Yeah, we'll he goes. I want to do one thing: get paid and smash people. And I was like, nice. <laughs> wait, but is Damn. it? Wait, who are Instagram fighters? What is he talking about? I'm confused. Well, as I was about, I was out saying we tried to get a clear answer. Our own Guillermo Cruz tried to go. Well, what's an Instagram fighter? Who are Instagram fighters? And I think it was our. Uh, oh my god, I can't remember his coach's name. Fought in the UFC, got arrested for stealing handbags a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I remember um, his name. Um, I, he I, like, he like, is there? He shot him down. He was like, "What are you asking, guy?" Yeah. And then Gary's like, "I'm not asking anything." Uh, Reza Madani. Uh, he, he's like, Gare, our own Gary is like, "Well, who are Instagram fighters?" And then you see Shemayev like kind of look over to the side and you hear someone yelling. And Reza Madani apparently yelled at Gary for asking that question. Yeah, he wouldn't <laughs> let him him answer that. <laughs> okay, uh, Shemayev has a hundred, almost a hundred thousand Instagram followers, so. I hate to tell you, you are an Instagram fighter, by the way. You still fight in a real cage and make real money, but you're, you, this is a, yeah, you're. You can't look down on people for utilizing social media. That's literally what creates their careers. Yeah, like, it's like, stop. This is what people should be doing. I don't know. So, so I don't want to focus that too much on that, but back to the question. Yes, him versus Nico Price would rule. <laughs> it does tickle my fancy, sir. <laughs> it does tickle my fancy. Jose, you tickled? No. Okay. Please let us know want, what this ice I want cream Mike, is. I want Mike Perry versus Nico Price right now, honestly. Mike Mike Perry has other other personal issues he's dealing with, all right? But no, I, I, didn't you see Cejudo tweet free Mike Perry? Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Cejudo, the most unretired, retired fighter. <laughs> <laughs> this question's for you, sir. <laughs> Smokey J MMA. <laughs> With the recent trend of high profile UFC fighters dyeing their hair blonde and styling it in a very similar way to the hairdo Jose was rocking. Also, respect for putting my accent. A. Does Jose feel like a trendsetter? And B. Is Jose more mindful of his style choices now knowing that he may be the inspiration? Well, mm. I'm going to give a little. I am going to get a little bit of shine to uh, Chris Sunshine Lencioni, who was the OG. Uh, MMA fighter, Bellator fighter who uh, has been dyeing his hair forever to the point where he's uh, IG lived a lot of his dyeing scenarios and we've talked about it uh, a few times so I gotta give him credit where credit is due I didn't, so he's the original trendsetter but yes of course I have to be mindful 
when people are copying my style, especially Mike Perry, who called yeah. me out specifically for my hair, and now he has my hair. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Max Holloway has my hair. So the next thing you know, everyone's just going to be dressing in black T-shirts and black jeans and red sneakers, and then you know where it started. You're welcome. In- influencer. I know. That's an Instagrammer. I didn't, want, I didn't want to say it, but Alex said it for me. <laughs> Well, now, do you feel like you can't go back to blonde because people think you're copying them? Yeah, I really do. Yeah. I, was talk- I was thinking about this yesterday. I kind of want to go back to my, I had the Frank Ocean green hair for a while. Mm. I, was thinking about- I was thinking about going back to that, but that just doesn't last long because it-, it just grows out super fast. But don't worry, everyone's going to be growing their mustache out and then you know they're going to be copying me. And- I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, right. Do some more push-ups, you know, because, like, you know, that's all it takes, just lots of push-ups and pull-ups, you know. Oh, that's it? Yeah, yeah. Just clanging, just clanging and banging in the gym. Yeah. Oh, um, we got confirmation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, we got confirmation that Brunson and Shabazian will stay three rounds, so. That's disappointing, but oh, well. Makes sense. These are professional athletes. They have to be prepared and, you know, train properly. Sure. Jeez, mm-hmm. man. Respect, respect the martial arts, bro. <laughs> oh okay. Did we, did, 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 there was lots of question marks in that que- in that question. Did you? Did we answer them all? Does Jose feel like a trendsetter? No. Yes. Do I have to be more mindful for his style choices? Not knowing now, knowing that he may have been the inspiration. Yes. No. So, so no and yes. <laughs> you, do, do you feel like answering for Jose too, Alex? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And to be fair, my hair was silver for a long time before it grew out. Uh, what do you see as the ceiling for Figueredo as flyweight champion? Think he'll ever be able to headline a pay-per-view, or will he only headline fight nights and co-main event pay-per-views? No crowds really hurt him, in my opinion. A victory in front of the Brazilian crowd could really help his stock. Alex, I'll start with you. What is Figueredo's ceiling as the new flyweight champion of the world after violently submitting Joseph Benavides last weekend? Yeah, I feel like we've seen the ceiling, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how he's perceived in Brazil, obviously. I don't live there. Maybe he's a huge star. Maybe he's got that star power that we have been craving from the flyweight division. Um, But he just doesn't have it internationally as far as, from my perspective anyway. Um, So, yeah, I I, I see it the same way as, like, the women's division sort of get treated. Like, you throw him on a headline as a pay-per-view and you're going to hear bitching and moaning. Um, So I guess this is just kind of it. I don't know. Casey, your thoughts? Um... That's up. That's up. That's up to the UFC. If the UFC wants to make him a star, they need to treat him like a star. They have, you have to take a chance, put him, put, put him in a co-main event spot in a pay-per-view, and have Dana start doing cartwheels and backflips on how awesome he is during press conferences and stuff. You know, right? Just, and like, I mean, just, just like that kid is so tough. You know, he is an animal. He is one mean guy. You know, it's the Dana promoter talk, and um, I haven't heard too much right. from Dana talking talking about uh, Figueredo like that. You know, but uh, and if the UFC wants to pre- build him up, that uh, but you know what he but but the, but the question asked, do having no crowds really hurt him? His stock, uh, absolutely, absolutely, it hurts him. Um, I just think of like when, when we got to see Aldo when uh, which, which 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 victory was it when he beat uh Mendez when he Mendez is that, is that when Something he jumped like is that when he jumped into the crowd. And stuff was like one of the most incredible celebration I think we've we've ever seen in all the prize fighting, and the crowd holding him and Reed Harris going crazy trying to pull him down, <laughs> you know it's just like um make like right now um I know I'm just yeah these big fights just don't feel big without fans unfortunately they feel they feel they're fun to watch, and um as mm-hmm. as like hardcore fans who know everything that's going on it's it's interesting but. For people who are just kind of watching, that that fight just feels like another fight that's on TV. They it doesn't. There's no, there's no extra significance to it, um, to me, without a crowd there, without seeing him and you know, with all these Brazilians like just holding him up on their shoulders. Um, and there's, and there's like and there's no and we, like remember when Max won the belt the first time when he went back to Hawaii? There was like all these like um, yeah. all these people at the airports and just like these giant crowds. We're not gonna get that anymore. We don't get to see. Um, Figueredo arrived back at um, right back in Brazil with you know thousands of people waiting in the terminal cheering him on, so it's just it's 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 gonna be tough. If this pandemic wasn't happening, I really wish they would follow him around with the camera as he went to all of his random odd jobs he had, and talked to all his old bosses. Did you watch his? You watched his interview with Guillerme Casey? I saw, yeah, some of it. Yeah. 
where he talked about how he was a hairdresser and then a sushi chef and then a mason and then a security guard and then a taxi driver like he's doing all these random odd jobs imagine if he had the belt and he just went around to all of his old like there's that photo of him and his cow and then there's a photo of him in his sushi chef outfit i think it's her uh, the pandemic is for sure hurting him um but i agree stick him in co-main events of big pay-per-view cards or headline fight nights because i think one of the big things that hurt demetrius johnson in terms of not being a quote-unquote star is if you look back at his run he was supposed to be the co-main event of a lot of high-level pay-per-view cards and then subsequent events either forced him into the pay-per-view or pulled him out like he headlines the card that no, he headlined a card that had Con McGregor versus Dustin Poirier, Yor Romero, Tim Kennedy, Amanda Nunes, Kat Gano, Don Cerrone, Eddie Alvarez, and then everyone left when Demetrius Johnson fought Chris Carriasso. He got pulled. He was originally supposed to be the co-main event of TJ versus Hannon Burrell the month before, and then Jones Gustafson was supposed to hand that September card, and then when Gustafson or Jones pulled out, I can't remember who, they just bumped him over to the pay-per-view. Or he was supposed to headline a co-main event in Montreal against DJ Hennenbrow too again, and then I think TJ broke his ribs, and then he got elevated to the main event with Horiguchi. So he keeps getting pulled from these high-level spots and thrust into a pay-per-view spot that he never asked for, and he never got that shine. The only one he got was when he was the co-headliner for John Jones' Ovin St. Prue when he crushed Henry Cejudo the first time. And then he loses in the co-main event of the TJ Cody Garbrandt, too. So I think all if he had just kept all those co-main event slots on the high-profile cards, it could be a different story. But we don't, we'll never know. This is true. You never know. But yes, Figueredo's get if but if Figueredo just goes out there and melts everyone in one round over and over and over and over and over, it could be a big deal going forward. Actually, um, on Monday, on um, between the links, Stephen Rocco had a good idea to promote him in a way that like highlights all those past jobs. Like, let's show Figgy making some sushi rolls or something like that. Would be hilarious. I'd love to watch that. I would but, but, too. But this is the problem, though. The UFC. I mean. I mean, how many times? Uh, how many times have we seen him fight? And we work in we work in the sport, and like I know nothing about him. And then I see a couple of random videos, like not from the UFC, but from other other media outlets, showing him doing hairs. I was like, I was like, oh, this is amazing! Like this mm-hmm. this incredibly violent man. He's like, he's just like, mm, yeah. crimp, just a little crimper, you know? Like I'm like, that's so cute. He's like doing the rolls and everything. I'm like, this is amazing. Like this is this is what I want to know about these guys. I mean, yeah, we. Yeah, everyone everyone can knock each other out. Everyone's violent and stuff, but like there's more to the sport and that's why we care about it cuz cuz he's going to lose eventually. And how do we care about him when he after he loses? You know, how do we how do we why do why do we want to watch his next fight? You know, cuz like, oh, we're we're happy to follow him. We're, we're part of his story. We know we know the story. And um yeah. So, I think it's, I think it's, I think I just it's just maybe it's the pandemic times. I mean, the USA has a lot of things to worry about, but um well how, how much do you guys think the fact that he never fought and beat Henry Cejudo plays a factor? Oh, that's always going to play he, a factor. Yeah. I, I, yeah. As soon as Cejudo retired, I was like, oh, man, he's going to ride this forever. So, no, it, it, and Conor did the same thing. Conor's like, for every once in a while, Hugo, yeah. like, oh, the 45 belt doesn't even matter. I'm still the champ. You know, it's like, oh, no, you're not. You, you, know, you won it once, but then you didn't defend it, and we moved on. And But Cejudo's going to do the same Conor thing. He's like, for you and soon it can be like 90 years old he's gonna be like i still got the belt like ah. and we're gonna be like oh yeah he's yeah, no one beat him no one beat him so i guess suda's still the champ well you're not wrong alex Savas. anyway you have anything to add no but i do think figured i don't know that that's so Hudo being gone hurts him in a big that's why he keeps calling him out i mean you can't blame the guy yeah i mean and it, it yeah um, I don't see this question. I saw it and I I lost it where where it was. But um, I don't want to see the fight. But do you think Figueredo needs to fight Cody Gar- Cody Garbrandt? If Cody Garbrandt goes to 20, 25, does Cody Garbrandt skip the line? Is that what is that what's necessary for for the flyweight division right now and Figueredo I think in general? If- I think if, if Figueredo fights and beats Moreno, like they both teased on Instagram, and he gets that first, like, actual... Like, because right now, like, the last flyweight title defense was, again, another bantamweight champion dropping down and skipping the line. That was when TJ Dillashaw lost to Henry Cejudo. If Figueredo goes out there and beats an actual flyweight, and then Cody Garbrandt comes and skips the line, I wouldn't complain. But I do want to see him fight an actual flyweight first. 
Yeah, I would love. To, yeah, I would love to see Figueroa versus either Alex Perez or um, or Moreno. I'm not sure. I have either. either one of those. I think both those guys uh, have earned the shot, but fight those. And I would love to see the co-main event being like part like a fight night card. The co-main event being Garbrandt versus either Perez or Moreno, the guy that's whoever's not fighting for the title. And then so it, your your co-main and main event are both flyweight title fights, and that really and if Garbrandt can beat. Um, whoever he's facing, then obviously he gets he gets a title shot, and that should that should be enough to put that on a pay per view, at least as a co main event. Yeah. You you would you would You're hope. not wrong. Um, You're not wrong. So that's my that's my. But yeah. if, if 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 Cody doesn't want to drop down, like if he thinks he like, because right now there's no no one contender at bantamweight yet officially, because everyone keep which is ridiculous. I know, but <laughs> if if Cody doesn't want to drop down just yet, I really do want to see Figueroa versus Perez and then Moreno Askarov too as the co-main event, and then the fighter and then the winners fight each other. So it's like a little final four of flyways. Cool, cool. But that not nothing's official in, in MMA is silly. Yeah. <laughs> what is the flyweight division's future if the if the champion keeps calling out fighters who are either retired or not in the UFC? Alex, you talked about this like a few minutes ago. Yeah, I think he's just trying to stay relevant. Like he's just like I don't know. Maybe he's just afraid that the flyweights just won't get any attention, and he's just trying to to grab as much of that limelight as possible. I don't I don't think it's his fault. I think he really will fight anyone that the UFC puts in front of him. Unfortunately, I think the UFC is gonna push these super fights. I agree. Uh, also, this is from the Seaside on Twitter, longtime commenter. Um, I think he's calling out Cejudo in a way that Cejudo wants big money. And uh, if two fighters can draw, if he can get a dance partner that can talk as much garbage as him, uh, but also be an incredibly violent fighter, maybe he's hoping Henry Cejudo, that'll be enough to lure Henry Cejudo back to 125 pound division because also let's not forget Henry Cejudo can speak Portuguese too so if they want to go to if, <laughs> if the pandemic is if the pandemic ends for whatever reason and they want to go to Brazil and do Henry Cejudo versus Figueiredo in Rio I'm not going to complain because they can both sell that fight down there but I think Figueiredo needs to do a lot more than just say yeah I'll fight him if they put him in front of me he's got because like remember when Nate Diaz said during his retirement is no one did it right if someone he just goes out there and says, "Hey, this guy sucks. I want to fight him," and he just keeps talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, then Nate Diaz is going to come out because I think Nate Diaz's example was he goes, "I don't want to go to a coffee shop and then have some fan come up to me and say, did you hear what this guy said about you? He said he's going to kick your ass.'" And then all <laughs> these fans start coming up and saying the same thing. That that's a problem. I don't want that to happen. So Figueroa keeps keeps poking Henry Cejudo, maybe, but I don't see it, especially at flyweight. We just got confirmation. This is important. Yep. Can you read that? Oh. Oh wow. Esterlin also confirmed. Okay, maybe not confirmed, but pretty sure. <laughs> Lem Oreo is lemon Oreo. I am one hundred percent in favor of that. I would destroy that ice cream. I love lemon ice cream and I love Oreo ice cream. Put that in front of me and it will be gone in about five seconds. Interesting. Man, Jose is a Jose. I, I got Jose happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Oreos what, are the best. You know what's really They're good? Also vegan. Yes, I, I love accidental vegan. Um, have you tried Oreo thins? Yes, amazing. They're so ten, good. Ten times better. I've been proponent of unstuffed Oreos my whole life. Yes. Like I don't want double stuffed. I want less filling, more cookie. <laughs> There are, I feel like I'm getting, I'm becoming such an old adult because as a kid I'll be like no I just want the cream I just want the filling that's all I want and as an adult and now I'm all like nah, I can get we can slim can go a little light on the cream and it's yeah. more Oreo man we suck <laughs> I know I love it though I don't care how much cream is in it if it's double stuffed thin stuffed no stuffed triple stuffed I just like Oreos <laughs> thank you except guys. even. I don't, there's a lot of the bad, like, holiday variants. Mm -hmm. I love the orange Oreos. I hate the green Oreos. The red ones, I'm indifferent. The watermelon ones are terrible, but the, the orange ones are amazing. Yeah, they tried to push watermelon Oreos once, and they were real bad. Oh, they are bad. <laughs> oh, he's talking about Oreos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also think, I also Wait, wait, wait what did you think he was talking about? So we have a comment. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what the 30 free men. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a comment yes. on screen, yeah. <laughs> Man, yes, have, Oreos are vegan. Yeah. 
Uh, you know what? I didn't know we have we have we have a lot of Oreo fans online right now. This is good. This is, yeah, because Oreos are the best. This, mm-hmm. this is good. Yeah, it's never a wrong time for Oreos. I have a pack of sitting over there. <laughs> You're staring at it. Probably, no, I'm probably gonna destroy them after this. After we're done on the show <laughs> at eleven o'clock. <laughs> Does the winner of Whitaker Till get the next tile shot, or is Cannoneer up next? Well. This is from Just My Two Cents on the YouTube comments. Um, uh, Israel Adesanya, current champion, is supposedly already lined up to face Paulo Costa. Um, so depending on how that goes, you never know. But Cannoneer, I mean, Israel Adesanya has already said he wants Cannoneer to get one more win. So if Cannoneer, who was originally supposed to fight Whitaker, let's not forget that earlier this year, if Cannoneer's healthy, and Paulo Costa, Israel Sun is an insane fight, and they get beat up and what have you. And Cannoneer wants to fight the winner of that, and Jack Hermanson fights the loser. I wouldn't hate any of that scenario, but first Cannoneer has to get healthy, so we can't even matchmake him without, because I think he had shoulder surgery, so can't matchmake him until he's 100% healthy. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Yeah, no. That's yeah. too risky. Until, yeah, until Cannoneer you know, crystals up, nah, he's, it's, just, mm-hmm. it's probably going to be... Uh, <laughs> and unfortunately for Cannoneer, too, even if he... Recovers from his um, surgery. I, I can't think. One more one. I think. Yeah, I think he's been for the U, for the UFC, for the uh, just for you know getting viewers. He's been he's been out of the limelight too long, so they're gonna have to. He's gonna have to get another. He's gonna have to get another big fight. Ooh, he could fight the winner of uh, Shabazian uh, uh, Brunson or Romero and Uriah Hall. Either one. Either one. All, all, all sound good. Bye. Because uh, when he was on the A side, Cannoneer was like, "Sure, I'll fight your Romero, whatever." Like he didn't <laughs> care. So anyone that wants to fight your Romero, go ahead. And can uh, yeah, and can there, one more win. Yeah, yeah, most likely one more win after he recovers. Um, but um, um, Cannoneer is one of those guys. Like you know, honestly, we just don't know how good he is at middleweight. Like, I mean, am I wrong? At, at middleweight, he's been pretty much just rolling he, through people. Like. He destroyed David Branch on short notice in Madison Square Garden, and then he beat Anderson Silva when Anderson Silva blew his knee out. Well, he, 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 well, he blew his knee out for a reason because Cannoneer was right, like shooting. Right. Yeah. Well, what? Also, right. 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 Um, but that was so Anderson Silva lost, but, but there was also all those boos in front of him. So you remember how we talked about we need that image of him going berserk with all the fans going insane mm-hmm. for Figueredo? It was the opposite of Cannoneer. He he beats one of the most beloved fighters ever like not by punch but by anderson's knee blowing out which yeah. we all agree was because canon it was cannoneer did that yeah and then fans boo him so it's not what you want to see it's like when chris wyman snapped his leg in half what? or, or um, when or he, when he, when dc was his... dc was beating the crap out of dan henderson you just don't it's just like oh you're beating him right. bad you know it just felt weird well yeah. at least dan at least daniel cormier beat like finished dan henderson with a choke like yeah Anderson just fell over and was like crying. Like no one wants to see that. And then he destroys Jack Hermanson again in Jack Hermanson's hometown at super early in the day because it was on it was over in Copenhagen, if I'm not mistaken. So you're not wrong. We all know he's amazing, but he hasn't really had that moment in front of the fans. Yep. But uh, yeah. Uh, so most likely, Whitaker. Well, well, I'm not sure if Whitaker gets a rematch, but if Till wins. Absolutely, he'll be fighting the winner of uh, Adesanya versus Costa, which isn't official, right? Because no, yeah, because Adesanya saying is real, but then the UFC and yeah, something's going on there. So, do you think the oh may oh maybe the UFC is waiting for this fight to happen? They, yeah, man, it, 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 it sounds like um whoever's fighting Adesanya next is just gonna be the you know who 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 would take it for less. One of those situations between between t- between Till and Costa. That sucks because I want to. Oh yeah, that sucks a lot. Or they're trying to make uh, the Ultimate Fighter. Ah uh, yeah. Uh, oh, no, don't bring the Ultimate Fighter back. I don't know, man. Israel Adesanya and then Costa and or Till all like in there. That would be kind of fun to watch. I think. <laughs> That'd make me watch it again. Because Darren Till is a crazy man, Adesanya is a crazy man, and Apollo Costa is a crazy man. Any one of those three combinations, I would actually watch. No. <laughs> okay. No. Just I'm gonna drink my black coffee and watch it, and you can drink your oat milk and try and swing around your Russian uh, bag. Man, <laughs> Bulgar- Bulgarian bag, sir. Whatever. Whatever. Oh. Can you swing it around your head yet? Yeah, I can do it. I'm good. I'm good. I, I I've been I've been like I've been got 
So I have like a 37 pound and then there's a 17 pound. So I, I've been working with Esther. You know, she's, I don't want her to throw her back out, but she's been swinging around and getting those curls in, you know. There you go. Getting swole up here in the Panda Dojo. <laughs> getting those gains. You're gonna look, you're looking, getting some Pat Wyman arms pretty soon. Dave Meltzer arms? Yeah, Dave Meltzer arms. All right, next question. <laughs> Weirdos. Do, 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 do. Do you think Jack should re oh, from 916 Sam Harris on Twitter? Do you think Jack should rematch Jared and the winner of Till versus Rob gets the winner of Izzy or Costa? We kind of already talked about this, but no, I don't think Jack will rematch Cannoneer. Um, uh, I think we're all kind of in agreement that it really depends on who wins on Saturday before you can really match make. Plus, Cannoneer's hurt. Plus, there's a lot of other middleweight fights that need to happen. I really think right? Till's going to fight out of sign no matter what. I mean, that's what he said. He's like, I'm not taking any other, any other name. And I think he's got the uh, the recognition to do that. I think the UFC wants that. That that would do big numbers. Till is super popular. I yeah. don't know if you've, like, Alex, when we were doing all the social media stuff and YouTube stuff, Till, out, other than Dana White, gets the most traffic. Yeah. Plus, he's like, he, he doesn't censor himself ever. And, like, the only thing I didn't like about Till before was his – was his cocky attitude and now he's kept that in check and now he's like the most likable person i love him on social media i love I'm him i'm dreading saturday like i love whitaker now i love till and i don't want to watch it it's canceled <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah i felt the same way when uh, izzy fought anderson silva i was like i don't want to watch this but yeah. i actually thoroughly enjoyed that fight to the point where i have that picture blown up by esther behind me yeah, that's, but anyway. and that's why I don't want to see Aldana versus Home. Well, for multiple reasons, oh. and, and but most importantly, it's like, oh, I like them. They're both so nice. I don't. Why? Why, why are they hitting each other? Just they should hang out. I just, <laughs> I just tell myself like when people, because I get asked this a few times, like when you're when covering the sport, you obviously become close to certain fighters or you become friendly. Like, how do you watch them fist fight another human being? I just tell myself it's a high level martial arts competition. And I just I have to push it out of my mind. Like when Korean Zombie fought Yair Rodriguez, I didn't want anyone to win that fight. <laughs> uh, but I just go, this fight is gonna absolutely rule, and they're both gonna have a good time. And then one of them did not have a good time at the end of that one. <laughs> if my 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 perception of watching fighters, I I feel a, a mo more of an emotional connection with. I. I I really wonder how much how different I would feel if I knew that they would be re receiving the same amount of money, win or lose. Like yeah. the, no, the fact knowing that they're doing all this and then they get knocked out and then oh now their check is cut in half, and it's just it's just and then their next paycheck is gonna be you know because if every win you usually get more for the next fight a lot of times, so it's just it sucks knowing that seeing someone you care about and seeing their face broken on TV. And also right. knowing that, yeah, like, I just, I'm trying to imagine that, like, you going to work and then all of a sudden, like, you get knocked out and they also take $100,000 from you that you thought you were going to have, that you were kind of planning <laughs> your life on or whatever. That's just, um, man, this sport sucks. <laughs> so, yeah. Alex, so, Alex, what was the hardest fight for you to watch in terms of your attachments to fighters? Oh, I don't know off the top of my head. That would take me a minute. I'm not good on the fly. I don't know. <laughs> Casey, what I mean, about you? Um, I would actually, uh, the one that sticks in my head the, the biggest was um, when Mayhem Miller fought uh, Michael Bisping. Um, at that time, I, was, I, I did a lot of uh, behind the scenes stuff of uh, uh, Jason Mayhem Miller. And um, so I, I've, been there for, I've been there for a lot of his ride, the ups, the ups and downs. But to um, just to know how much he wanted that and just see him get his ass. I mean, he lost the fight fair and square, but to see him get his ass kicked, it was just like, damn, man. It was just like, because, you know, you see him in training, you see him in that hard weight cut, you know, like, all right, man, this, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm basically with him the entire fight week, the week before. And then as soon as they kind of go into the locker rooms, I'm like, all right, guys, I'll see you after the fight. And then, like, it's tough. It's, it's just tough. But, you know, you kind of get used to it. But you don't like getting used to that feeling of watching um, just people you, you care about getting their ass kicked. So, um, but that's the sport. It's not fun. <laughs> it's the, 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 feeling, the feeling of them losing sucks way more than the, feel, than the feeling of them winning, I guess. You know, it's kind of like, like why I don't gamble. 
because the feeling of losing money sucks so much more than the feeling of winning money, I guess. Mm-hmm. You're not wrong. I didn't like Whitaker and Adesanya. That one kind of hurt. <laughs> Anytime anybody yeah. loses a belt, like a really great champ loses a belt, I don't. I don't. I, I'm gonna hate to watch Volkanovski if he ever loses the belt. I think he is just like an amazing person. I don't want to see that. It's um, when Adesanya fought. Well, when Whitaker fought Adesanya, I lo- I really enjoyed watching both men fight, and I think both of them are super fascinating individuals for their own right. Like Israel Adesanya uh, is like such a colorful character, and Robert Whitaker is such a professional, but at the same time, he can. His method of like talking trash is just so weird. Like while wow, he's like, "Yeah, I hope Darren Till breaks his leg," whatever. <laughs> like he's so nonchalant about it. Um, they're both great interviews. They're both professionals. Um, I viewed that as like the two fighters in the absolute prime of their careers, and like there's no argument they were the two best middleweights. And they're both like that built-in rivalry with Australia and New Zealand. It was just a lot of things going into that fight that I just really had to hype myself up and not feel sad for either man if they lost because but they I would have lost the best man that one was even harder though because i mean whitaker even said like he wasn't himself in that if both fighters show up to that fight feeling like a hundred percent and giving it everything they have then i'm definitely better with the loss but when you show up and you're you're not there mentally like it that that makes it so much harder to watch in my opinion you're not wrong you know, yeah that one was a hard one. you know a fight i'm not looking forward to and i know it's gonna be awesome is Angela Hill versus Michelle Watterson. Mm, that's a good one, yeah. I was like, oh, like, because I've, 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 I've done, I've, I've spent time, like, good amount of time with them at their camps, um, just being with them, having, you know, lunch with them after training and things like that. So, like, oh, you know, I, I've talked to them about other than fight stuff, like, how are your parents doing and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> I, like I've met both their moms, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's just like, Who's oh. got the better mom? Ooh, wow. Oh, man, I don't want to say this on air. No, you shouldn't. (laughs) Both their moms are awesome. Angela Hill's mom is super awesome. She has horses. And uh, Michelle Watterson's mom is super awesome, too. Uh, You've seen her in videos. Like, Michelle does a great impression of her. But, uh, yeah. (laughs) We we, we need need more fighters just to be complete assholes. Just be assholes. And I need good guy versus bad guy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't don't want good. Good guy versus bad (laughs) guy. Yeah. Yeah, we need more Colby Covington. Yeah, I need, I need everyone. Yeah, I love watching him fight. Cause yeah, we need some professional professional wrestling. Yeah, heels versus baby faces. You need, need, need half the fighters to be all like super MAGA, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big question coming from, up from Kiwi MMA NZ. Mark is his name. <laughs> Hashtag the A side tips and how to grow a boss mustache like you guys, Alex. I'll take Alex. Lead on this. <laughs> Alex? Well, (laughs) (laughs) the answer is drink black coffee. Drink black coffee. Don't put anything in it. Specifically, ice Americanos. Um, The secret to having a good mustache is soy. Just put soy in everything. Uh, Just um, soy milk, soy shampoo, soy soap, uh, soy covers. Yeah. um, Actually, if you get a soy and mold it into like uh, a... a woman and so like and just and just shape it into like a, you have like a soy girlfriend and stuff and that's that's the key, that's the key so um yeah so so everyone at home um post your photos of you with um soy sculptures and just um enjoy and watch the facial hair bloom honestly i've noticed the trend the trend of calling you soy boy has gone down greatly in the last few months and you just erased the last <laughs> few months of soy boy free comments with that statement right there. So to answer your question, Mark, drink black coffee and don't put anything in. I don't have anything against soy, but I don't put it in my coffee. Do lots of push-ups too. Do lots of push-ups. <laughs> From Trumbo on the website, middleweight title picture. If Till wins versus Rob, does he get, does he get the next shot at middleweight belt, or does Cannoneer, or do you have the winners fight Jared for the next shot? Till is obviously the most charismatic of the contenders and potentially the biggest star. Does that get him the title shot? I think Alex said it best. Like, yeah, probably. If Darren Till wins, he's gonna like he's gonna hold out for a title shot, if not 
quote. I don't even think it would be skipping the line because if he beats Robert Whitaker, wouldn't he technically be the number one ranked middleweight? Yeah, and Kelvin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Darren Till. If Darren Till wins, he would deserve the title shot. Wouldn't be skipping the line, or does he get the next shot? So, but if Jared Cannonier comes back and he want and he gets fight against Darren Till, I'm still gonna like that fight too. But yeah, Darren Till gets the title shot, right, guys? Yeah, Even absolutely. Even if he loses, I think he gets the title. <laughs> shot. I'm just gonna put that on record. <laughs> I go. really do. I don't think well, immediately, like, but yeah. There's a, there, if, if, if it would be if, like Gustafson in DC. Yeah. Which is one of the weirdest. Yeah. Because we know it's going to be a good fight, but no, he doesn't earn it, but it's a good fight. You're, you're going to be like, eh, whatever. You know, because yeah. I, I feel like we do that a lot. Eh, whatever. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we'll make We're a, so desensitized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, there's a lot of scenarios that are happening right now where, like, like technically Marlon Moraes was supposed to fight Peter Yan already. And then now he's technically, like, one of the one of the guys up there. It reminds me of when... DC beat Rumble Johnson at UFC 187 when John Jones got the hit and run. So then he became champ and then immediately fought Gustafson. He was coming off a loss. People forget DC was had signed and had done media to fight Ryan Bader in New Orleans. And then they pulled him from that fight. And then Bader was just like, hey, guys, what about me? I was already supposed to fight DC. Let me fight for the title. And then instead they gave it to Gustafson, who's coming off of a loss. So we've seen this narrative before. So there is no scenario that is out of the picture. Oh man, I, I I forgot about that moment. I forgot that it was ba- that when they announced Cormier Gustafson, I was like, "What?" It's like Bader's right there. He was signed to fight that, but they did the same. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Marlon Marlin got the same treatment that Ryan Bader got. Yeah, the exact yep. same treatment. You're right because like it, every- it was supposed because DC had lost to John Jones, and then it was going to be DC in New Orleans. Like he's from Louisiana. He, they went and did media in Louisiana to hype the fight up. And then the main event ended up being Dan Henderson versus Tim Bosch. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it, it, man, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the same arguments, too, about Ryan, like, why Marlon shouldn't fight for the titles. Like, well, he lost his title shot. But what about Gustafson? Gustafson lost his title shot against John Jones, but he still got another one against another person. Like, like I still, like, as much as I think Aljamain Sterling deserves the next title shot, um, which is that's a whole other stupid topic that we can talk about later, um, but like I think Marlon Rice is equal as an equal standing where out with Al Jermaine. Uh but but doesn't the, the, so many athletes are coming down with COVID? I'm forgetting who has what. Did Marlon? Did Marlon get COVID? Is that? I think so. Okay, that's what I mean. I think so. Like remember when it first happened? When these started first happening, it was like a big deal. Like whoa. You know, this basketball player gets COVID. Now it's kind of like it's in the news for about 10 seconds. And you kind of forget, like, wait, you know. <laughs> so um, but so I think Marlon is out for a little bit because of um, uh, COVID issues. So, um, yeah. Top UFC band of Victoria Marlon Marais test positive for the coronavirus. That was a week ago. Okay. Yeah. Very long time ago then. So, yeah. So, Marlon. So Mar- he wants to return in October. He, he wants to fight Cody in October. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Neat. Neat. <laughs> how are the current UFC rank? How are the UFC rankings currently made, and how would you fix them? Well, they're made. You can go read the excellent inter- piece on the rankings panel by our own AK Lee, who interviewed a bunch of the panelists, and they kind of break down like their thoughts going into things and weird emails they get or whatnot. But how would you fix them? Alex, how would you fix the UFC rankings? So I looked this up because last time we talked about rankings, you had asked about tennis. And so I found a very simple way that that the tennis does it, and it makes complete sense. So every week, the set of rankings is a list of the point totals earned by players at tournaments in the last 52 weeks. At the conclusion of every tournament, the rankings drop points earned the previous year and replace them with the points won in just the event. So it's like the more tournaments you play, the more points you get, you know, the higher you're obviously going to be in the rankings. So the more active players are obviously higher right. in the rankings too. So I don't know, some variation of that makes a lot of sense. Wait, so in the tennis so rankings, the act, so act, they reward activity, is what you're saying? Yeah, basically. But in the tennis rankings, there's no subjectivity. It's all just based on wins and losses, right? Yep, can't be. Yeah, it doesn't discriminate. Not, so yeah, so like if if I don't know Serena Williams, if she if she wins a close five set match. It counts just as much as blowing someone out three straight sets, right? I'm assuming so, but I don't know for sure. Okay. But I think so. It's but just but like what, I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is like, yeah, because like UFC um, and prize fighting rankings are so different because it's not 
it's who you win and how you win. You know, oh, sorry, who you who you beat and how you win. You know, like um, yeah, so weird. Um, oh, but but so how will we um? So to answer the question, how are the UFC rankings currently made? Uh, can can you explain? Can you can you explain to everyone, Jose, in about thirty seconds? So the current UFC rankings are a, a, a panel of media members uh, go in and they rank their fighters uh, based on their. It's completely subjective. Uh, they slot the top fifteen for all of them and then they submit it and then the UFC kind of creates like an average rankings of the of all of them. Some of it's weird, some of it's not. Like some fighters complain. Some some of it make a lot of it. Usually in the top five, it makes a lot of sense, but. You can tell when a fighter finally has a fight booked and the UFC want, kind of wants to put, pushes a narrative, a fighter will all of a sudden jump up three spots without even fighting. Uh, and someone will fall three spots without without fighting. So you, that kind of gets a little murky. Um, I personally like the idea of having a coach's poll and an AP poll like in college sports. You can have two polls where they, and you can see how they rank next to each other. I also, in my own head, if when I used to do rankings for various other sites way in the past, if you haven't fought in 365 days, you're off my rankings. So if you are if you go one whole year, calendar year, without a fight, I drop you completely. Uh, just because, like Alex says, I like activity from mm-hmm. fighters in order to make, uh, in order to include them in the rankings. How do you feel about, and I, I remember having this a while back, having an, an argument with another media member about this, but um, like say, I'm, I'm gonna use a current example, say, so say we thought Angela Hill beat Claudia. That's how we thought. No, say we mm-hmm. no. Now, but the following the the rankings, even though I would say ninety percent of media thought that in their own prediction, in their own uh, post fight analysis, they had Angela Hill winning. But in the rankings, the next week, Angela Hill dropped in ranking. You got you got went, went even farther behind Claudia rather than well. If you thought she had won, then why isn't she above Claudia now? Do you w- mm-hmm. like, w- how would you have ranked that w- when a fighter? Things get, when a fighter gets a bad decision, do you not respect the decision? And you go, no, no, I, th- I still think this fight, this fighter is better, so I'm gonna rank him above that fighter now. You gotta respect the decision, I think. See, I, I say, I say, I, the rankings are subjective, so I, I say, screw that. That's like, yeah. It's like, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, that's the thing. You can't fix the rankings until you fix the judging. It's like it all goes kind of hand in hand. I think. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't. Yeah, I, I, I would always rank the person I think is the better fighter. And I, in that night, I thought Angela Hill was a better fighter. So where, say say Claudio was ranked number nine, and Angela was like fifteen. Then by the n- next week's rankings, I would have had Angela Hill at number eight, and probably Claudia at like, number ten, like you know whatever. So um, I always so, thought that was weird. So it's like it's like it's like when Dominic Reyes lost to John Jones, he popped up. I think I think he was fifteenth, just pound for pound. Not in the light heavyweight. He was like he jumped up to the fifteenth pound for pound fighter in the world because a lot of people thought that he beat the number one fighter pound for pound, but technically got the loss. Yeah, like that's the thing too. Like I thought I thought Reyes won, so and if and if we, we all actually I think we you all can't thought, rank you can't rank him above John Jones though, because John Jones is the champion. Well, well see that that's UFC rankings. If we're just doing MMA rankings, then I would I would it's it's weird, yeah. I would think that Reyes would be above John Jones because if if one if, then where would you but then if this is just MMA where do you put Bader because well, like Bader can't fight John Jones right now well then he can't the, fight Dominic Reyes well yeah like, would, if we're doing all of MMA Bader would be top five but he just can't fight those guys so would he have no way to go up or down that's that's I mean that's always gonna be an issue you know it's like like where where do you put Douglas Lima I agree where do you put Douglas Lima like I right. Like where do you put right. where do you, where do you put Pitbull? You know, it's like it's a lot. It's a lot. Like because then at the end of it, at the end of the day, if that's if you're if you're ranking all of them made the top five is just going to be the five champions from all the, like the major promotions. Like, do you rank Usman higher than Lima, and then Lima just happens to be two, and then whoever like a one championship welterweight champion is number three, and then so on and so forth. It's a whole mess. <laughs> what? And that's why I like I'm not going to ever participate in the UFC rankings because. Those are used contractually against the fighter, so I don't like that mm-hmm. um, because they're, they're part of the UFC's payment system, like how they how they justify things. So I'm not, I don't want to be part. Of it. But if it was just some independent ranking, like man, like I, <laughs> there's there's almost no win. There's almost no way to do a perfect ranking. It's just because, especially with 
of no cross promotional stuff. Like, where do you put Horiguchi? Where do you put, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, geez, you know, everything's crazy. So, uh, to, to how do you fix them? Um, my answer is, to, my answer would be, um, pay little respect, give little respect to the actual UFC rankings. That's how I fix them. <laughs> Uh, let's fly through these last ones. Uh, from Ben Bones on Twitter. Uh, what's next for Robert if he beats Till and Israel Adesanya beats Costa? We all in agreement that Till Adesanya, if they both win, are going to fight each other, right? Yes. And it would be justified, especially if Cannonier is still hurt. All right, so they fight each other. Jan said it's possible for him to move down to 125. He also said he would like to move up to 145. He and Alex are the same height. So what is the likelihood that he becomes the first three-weight world champ in the UFC? Alex, you're already shaking your head. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> MMA is silly. Why not? There you go. Yeah, I mean, I'm not here to speak on if he would win both of those uh, opportunities, but I'm here for it. You yeah, want to try? You shoot for you shoot for the stars, man. <laughs> what did uh, what did Luke Rockhold say? A, like, perceive, believe, believe, achieve, 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 of, achieve believe, something weird Listen. like that. What did he get that yeah. off of? Like a chalkboard from a teacher's room? I don't know, but it was unbelievable when Michael Bisbee was just like, "Shut up!" <laughs> at the press conference. I, I, I would, That's I, a top five press conference moment for me. Oh. <laughs> You also was 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 that the same card with um, Uriah Faber and Dominic Cruz? Yes, UFC 199 when you got the boot. Dude, that press conference was so awesome. Dominic Cruz gave one of the, just one of the, oh my god, the the shit talk that Dominic Cruz has when Uriah Faber Uriah Faber was saying something, and then Cruz just goes, "Whatever, you and your close eyes." <laughs> it was like, I was like. Got him. <laughs> I was like, whoa. I was like, what? And he, what is that? I was, like, I was like, I was like, I don't know what that means, but I love it. <laughs> um, no, Jan has no chance of becoming a, a, a three weight world champion in the UFC only because the UFC would not allow that. You don't think? Jan's not that. Jan's not the guy that they want to have three belts. Now, I, 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 Garbrandt I, I, wanted to go to the belts. Then yeah. the UFC's talk. And, and I, UFC's like, what? And, th and this has nothing to do with Jan's actual fighting ability at all. This is solely business for the UFC. Mm -hmm. that, and that, that's why. That's why. I mean, yeah. I mean, um, he looked, Yeah, he could win the 45 belt. I don't know. He could win 25 belt. Like, uh, when, like remember when Israel Adesanya was like, I'll fight Stipe? I'd be like, yeah, the UFC wishes. Like you beat John Jones and then you go and beat Steve Bay, like of course the UFC is gonna want that want that to happen. It's never gonna happen anytime soon. All right. uh, Thank you, Ben Bones. All right, let me look. Okay, here's one. Let me get that question off. How long from just my two cents on YouTube? How long do you let the lightweight belt go undefended before stripping Habib? Shut up. What? No, no. This is. We're not talking about stripping Habib. No, what? No, it hasn't but... been here yet. What? What? But it will be over a year by the time he fights. Sure, but I think this is a situation where he's not hurt. His father passed away, and I'm not even going to talk about the possibility of stripping someone if they're healthy and they are dealing with the death of a, of a father. Well, I think stripping is over, overboard, but as far as yes. – how about interim? interim? Because he like will if, Justin wants, if Justin wants to defend the interim title, he has already said no. Ali, said, Ali came out and said – uh, this is what I saw on Twitter that uh, um, Habib told Justin to fight Connor, and C Justin was like, "No, I yeah. want to fight you." So you can't risk it, yeah. No, but I think there is an issue here because, I mean, so say uh, Habib doesn't want to come back till early 2001. I'm sorry, um, 2021. Um, That's then, not that far away. But the, <laughs> so so we have we we, have, we we don't have the interim belt defended or the actual real belt defended. That's fine. Yes. I, I think I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I'm yeah. totally fine with it, mostly because Justin and Habib, I think, are the two best lightweights. I also think, too, if this was anybody else but Habib, we wouldn't be having such a conversation because I know that Habib probably wants to get back in there, too. I know that he's pushing as far as 
probably as fast as he can to get back. He's, he's doing what he needs to do, but I, I firmly believe he's not taking any unnecessary amount of time to get back. Yeah. Plus, like Dana's like we're getting Dana's like we're going to give him his space. Dana, like I don't want to strip a human being just because their their father passed away. So could you imagine uh, the, the PR? Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> They, they were going to strip Stipe for saving people's lives. <laughs> yeah, and that was a dumb idea, too. Yeah, or it wasn't. The, <laughs> thing, the only scenario that I would be okay, and I, and I wouldn't be okay with stripping Habib, is if he gets stripped and they make Justin the undisputed lightweight champion, and Justin, say, fights Connor or Tony or Dustin or whoever and retains or whoever gets the title – and Habib comes back and gets that immediate tell shot. If his pay is 100% the same as if he were champion, fine. But I don't think Habib's that kind of guy. I so I don't have a problem with waiting while he deals with the passing of his father. I think uh, Justin should uh, def- de- defend the interim belt. If 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 Habib's gonna be out till 2021, I think it's just how it goes. It's like because like if yeah, I just. You got it, you We're got just it. in this period of, of of unusual circumstances, and you just have to keep making exceptions. We've been making exceptions since this pandemic started, so it's a, we've never seen this situation happen before, and now we're going to deal with it. And I think you have to set the precedent. Now we're not going to be stripping people who. No, I, I don't. No, I don't. I don't think a baby should be stripped. I just think you have to defend the the whatever the the, the most the highest available Justin, belt. Justin only fought in May, so it hasn't even been. Like it hasn't even been that long ago that Justin won in a very violent fight. And now that uh, Cejudo is retired, and we have a flyweight and a bantamweight champ, so it's not like anyone's holding up two divisions. That's two more divisions that titles that we can have on cards. Usman is now we have a welterweight belt that's now moving. We have a middleweight belt that's now moving. Light heavyweight now is really the only one that's stagnant. We don't know what the situation is going on. And then Rose, when Rose Wiley fight, Amanda Nunes, of course, featherweight, bantamweight, all this and that. But like we have at this moment in time, we have more divisions moving forward than we've had in a long time. I think the UFC can afford to let Habib wait. And Justin, you and I, Casey, have interviewed Justin Gaethje a million times the last few, like, year. And he he wants, I want to fight Habib over the belt. There's no way Justin Gage is going to give up that that fight. He cares more about fighting Habib than he does for a championship. Well, <laughs> I think money talks. Uh, we'll, see, we'll, see what, mean, we'll see what the money says. Ti- the timing is like 80% of this game. And if Gage defends his interim belt and gets seriously hurt, and then Habib is ready to come back, then what? Now, now you've just screwed everything up. I just, you can't risk that shit. I, I agree. No one fights. No fights. No one touch yeah. anyone. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, no one, MMA is canceled now until Habib comes back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, watch my 60, 666 with Yoked Jesus on YouTube. Do we need to bring back pride rules so fighters stop playing the one-hand-down game? Example, Sean West versus Boston Sam at LFA 84. Oh, my God, Casey, did you look at that photo? I saw it. Of Boston. I saw it. Yeah, that was- yeah I clicked. I clicked it. I saw it. It's real bad. Uh, illegal knee made Boston Salmon's eyeball turn into a cherry. Um, I just want some sort of unified rules across the board. I don't care what the rules are. All, I care what the rules are. I don't want soccer kicks. I don't want head stomps and all that stuff. But uh, I would like knees on the ground, and I would like some sort of uniform rule so John Anik doesn't have to announce, hey, by the way, we're doing these rules this time before every fight. Yeah, and, Thoughts? And, uh, um, of course, I want pride rules, and um, yeah, uh, this is just an unfortunate situation. Um, uh, Boston, uh, Boston S- Salmon, Salmon, Salmon. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I want knees on the ground. Yeah, this this it's a violent sport. That's what it is. I mean, I mean, people are saying, oh, this is too that, that's too violent and stuff. Okay, that's too violent to see. But like, we just saw a young lady get her knee bent backwards. Just Saturday, like that was gruesome. We're like, but we're like, yeah, MMA is awesome. So it's just um, I don't want soccer kicks back to the head for sure. Not man, do you... nah. I don't want that because when someone's getting their knee pops, they can quit. It's not like when they're on the ground and their head is against the fence, and you get soccer kicked into the fence, and your head has nowhere to go. You, nah, I don't want that. That. The only the only time I I go I go okay I can kind of see 
to to kind of bring back some of the rules a bit is in a cage. Is a cage because I because first I mean I'm very open about this. I hate cages. I hate I hate training in cages. I love rings so much better because the cage is a freaking the cage is a weapon and I like that the it's a weapon and you can use the cage and press them against the cage and yeah, you're right put them against the corner right, against the bottom and then wedge them in there and then knees on the ground knees are a grounded opponent when their head is in that corner or soccer kicks that's a super bad position because at least in a ring if your head on the ground you get kicked your head can go woo fly over there at least but your head has nowhere to fly so it's, it's filling everything but uh back to you but back to the question um yeah bring back pride rolls but it's not gonna happen so i'm kind of over it <laughs> But I disagree. I disagree with the question. I don't think Boston was playing the one one hand down game. I think um, he was actually really rocked, and um, unfortunately, he got he got up in a way you should never get up in MMA, which is you get up like that. You always get up with a hand out or a hand like this. Um, so, but he was That's he what was, happened. But with, he was super uh, rocked, Michael. When Michael Venom Page got KO'd by Lima, he said the same thing. He goes, "I just stood up wrong." Yeah, he got punched in the head. Yeah, and like, like, like when I when I train, we do that over and over, like how to get up properly, and like just like you you just never get up, you just never you just never get up certain ways in MMA, because of super dangerous situations like this. Because usually when you get up, your your legs are usually you're getting up because you're kind of rocked already. Because if you're if you're down there already, you know something happens. But uh, yeah, don't don't get up, don't don't never stand up in MMA without without a hand in front of your face. That's just the main main thing. Uh, any more? I know we're going a little over time, guys. But any more questions, Casey? Bring back <laughs> from JTMA. Bring back kick hackney nut punching. No, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, one of the things Joe Silva told me I thought was really um, former legendary, notorious UFC matchmaker. Um, we're talking about um, talking about nut punching, he said. You know the early UFCs are illegal, and he said, you know what? No one complained about nut punching back then because you just that was part of your defense. You protected your groin. <laughs> He's like, but said, but once we outlawed nut punching, everyone's sorry. Oh, my nuts hurt. <laughs> so, so, but that was just Joe Silva being a, a cruel a cruel guy. <laughs> Joe Silva was pro nut punching, by the way, <laughs> which I did like about that. <laughs> I took I took I took my hardest nut shot I've ever taken the other day in sparring. Just break, just sharing some personal news with you and everything. My cup worked great. It, was, it, was it looked like, like you survived. It was survived. <laughs> like it hit me and I just kind of like I kind of went mmm. And I was like and I was thinking I was thinking of the whole conversation we had of Dean Tom uh, Dean Thomas and um, Shorty Torres Shorty. about about um, about uh, ball shots and stuff and um, yeah after about ten seconds I was like all right I just got to do this otherwise it's just gonna keep festering <laughs> but um if, if, if you got if, if you got kicked in the in the groin um miss savas F- no that just reminded me though there was a, a, a recent fight where two women there was a groin kick and everyone yeah. was like does that hurt them and i was like oh my god uh, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah thanks if you've uh, obviously inexperienced in that area you wouldn't know but <laughs> uh, i can't remember who that was oh it was recent who? I can't remember. I know what you're talking about, but I cannot recall. I remember. Yeah, was it was it Jin? Was it Jenny Fry? Was it? Was that maybe? The... I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk to the, we'll talk to some ladies about getting. Usually, they get. They usually, they, it's usually when they're in the clinch and they, in the clinch and they take knees like right into the hoo ha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not wearing a, a cup or anything, so it's just kind of like. Oh. No. Yeah. That's just knee on pelvic bone. I guess. It's, yeah. It's just. Ugh. Oh wait, one more question. One more question. Pain, is, pain don't hurt. Pain don't hurt. <laughs> uh, la 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 la. Um, uh, I just got some comments. Yeah. Bring back women's Adam Wade to the UFC. Let's do it. From Telvin Kiap, keep Papa. Hundred percent. Bring it. Uh, someone asked who would win in a fight between you and me. Well, we don't want to fight, guys. That's ridiculous. Between Jose and Casey. And Casey? We don't want. Casey would win. We don't know. We don't want. What do you? What do you? What do you good is I have a. What are you weighing now, Jose? I'm. Te- one fifty seven, one fifty eight. Yeah, see, I I got twenty pounds on you. That's not. It's not, It's just. Sorry, guys. I, I have a good Ezekiel joke. That's it. 
I've been I've been getting I've been doing my hill sprints with a mask on and everything. It's not that bad. With the mask on? Yeah. It's not that hard. Are you around anyone? Uh yeah. The the the, the there's like a, some hills around here, so there's a bunch of not a bunch of other people, but I mean you're oh. running, so it's gonna you're I know you're sweat. Other people are running too, going up. Sta- there's a bunch of a bunch of stairs, so you know people there's there's spit particles everywhere, so it's not it's not it's not, it's not as bad uh, as you. Uh, think. It- Case, yes. I found a question on Twitter that I will answer, but I doubt you're going to have the screenshot. So I'll just read it out loud. From a young commenter named PJ Higgins, how much soy and black coffee is really needed? <laughs> All of the black coffee. Minimum three cups a day. Zero percent soy in that coffee. You can have soy whatever you want after that, but not in your coffee. That is the answer to a young commenter, PJ Higgins. All right, anyway. Uh, one, one, more, one more comment from Esther Lynn. <laughs> Neon pelvic bone can be very damaging with one, two, three. Was it four R's, five R's? Yeah. In there? So yeah, real damaging. Is that it for questions, Casey? Yeah, just, right. uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I would love a oh. woman's Adam. Here's a free promo. <laughs> <laughs> From PJ Higgins in the YouTube comment section. Diamond MMA, best cups in the world. All right. You know what though? I will say this, but Diamond MMA, they sent me a uh, Diamond MMA cup uh, a couple years ago and um, still use it. Unfortunately, the other day when I did get hitting the balls really hard, I, I was wearing another competitor brand cup. But mm-hmm. um, so I got I, I have I haven't got a full on you know hey hey to um, with a Diamond MMA cup yet. So um, can't tell you how great they are, but they're very comfortable. <laughs> Is that it for the questions, Casey? You don't want you don't you, we don't want to talk about groin shots anymore. Casey, I'll ask you how uh, are you excited <laughs> to see Loma Luke Luke Boon me come back? Uh, against Jin Yu Fry. Yes. Oh no, I hate that fight. I don't. I like I like them both. <laughs> I, knew I like them both. I don't want to see that. The only good thing about that they're both they're both atom weights who are fighting at straw weight, so there shouldn't be a size issue. Lomo's small. I, mean, I don't know if you ever seen. Her. I, I think Lomo's she, super small. I think she fights. I think she's always fought at straw weight, um, but she's a she's an atom weight. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, good elbows. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Now we got now we got mask people kind of talking about masks. Sorry. So we can we <laughs> sick. <laughs> We're gonna skip right over that. But of course, this has been the ASI live chat on Wednesday. Uh, I don't so nothing tomorrow. I don't think I hear Guillermo has a couple of videos coming out from Abu Dhabi, but of course we're back for weigh-ins on Friday. Fifteen fights! Wow, fifteen looking fights! Forward. It's like Gladiator Challenge, like we're playing in the casino. Looking forward, looking forward to that. So stay tuned. Come back here on Friday for our, your lovely weigh-in live stream. Guillermo is still on site in Abu Dhabi, Fight Island, the bringing beast. you all kinds of goodies. This is the last fight. Last fight card to fight Island before we head back to the UFC Apex in August. But Casey, before we start on anything you want to say to our listeners. Be nice to each other, everyone. Wear your mask. Be smart. That's all. Recycle. Don't be, don't be nice to people who don't who refuse to wear masks though. Anyway. Alex, anything you want to say before we I actually start do. Off? There's this guy on Twitter, and I'm gonna give him a shout out. I don't know him. Um, I don't even know if he watches this show, but his uh, handle is at Marcel at Big Marcel 24, and he does these. I don't, you're not gonna be able to see this, but it's a giant list of every UFC fight that's been announced. The black means it's a done deal. Red is verbally agreed or confirmed by one fighter. Green is a confirmed main event. Like this guy has saved my life. If you guys need any of your fight information, who's coming up? This guy. This is like big time. I love that. I will like to say. Me and Marcel were in, I am undefeated against that man in MMA trivia. He came in a <laughs> paltry second place. So, if, Mike Heck, if you're watching this and somehow I get the championship back, I would love to throw down with Big Marcel again so he can go 0-2 against me. But, yeah, big shout out okay. uh, to Marcel. Uh, I like that guy a lot. He's very, very nice, very, very intelligent. And like Alex said, uh, is very thorough with his uh, MMA fight. Uh, research and fight announcements. So yes, shout out to Marcel, fan of the show, or friend of the show. 
Uh, but with that, this has been Jose. That's been Alex. That's been Casey. Come back here Friday for weigh-ins. This is going to be on Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all that stuff. But until next Wednesday, we're out. Bah, 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 bah.